So if you're like me and your oven is not heating up, it's quite possible it's the element. Now you can save yourself some money by doing this yourself. It's quite easy. Stick around and I'll show you how I do it. So this is my Bosch fan assisted oven. We have it about 10 years now and the heating element in the oven is not working. The grill part is working but the, the oven doesn't get hot. So I checked it the other day anyway and I know that the element is gone. So we're going to change the element in it here now. First things first, shut the power off. Um, you don't want to get electrocuted. Here we go. So a lot of these ovens are held in by a couple of screws that are hidden behind the door. So when you open the door on this one, we've got a, a screw here and another one here. Some of these ovens have, you know, another couple down lower as well. So anyway, these are just Phillips screws. I'm going to take it out with my impact driver. So Now be careful when you're taking the screws out that the, the oven isn't front heavy, you know, and if it is, it might actually fall out of the hole, you know, so in this case that won't happen, but it could happen. So just be careful. Here we go. That's the second screw out. And that's it, the oven is ready to come out. Now there will be a wire behind it. I know in, in this instance that the wire is quite long and I can lift it out with the wire still connected. Um, so we're going to do that now. Now I'm just going to pull this out. The screws are removed. There's a long wire on the back of this one. And I'm just going to take it out, just going to slide it out. I put this in years ago, so I know how it's done. So sometimes on these things, there's handles that you can get your hand into. And that is the case with this one. Now there's quite a long wire on this and I can lift it, leaving it connected and do the disconnections and so on, on the counter. So I just have to lift it up. And they're quite heavy, you might need some, some help doing it. Okay, so we're going in at the back now. So on this Bosch model, there's six Torx screws holding the back plate on. They're, they're size Torx 20. Okay, so here we go. Easy to take out. I have one out. Okay, that's all six screws out. On this one, this just lifts back a little bit and then pulls up. Two tabs on the bottom, here and here, and they go into two little holes down here. So that's it. Easy. Now the element for the fan assist is here. Okay, there's two terminals on it. I'm just going to disconnect the wires. It's one off. It's the two off. Okay, it's AC so it doesn't matter which is top and which is bottom. Now with these ovens and so on, you have to be a bit careful because some of the, uh, the cut, you know, sheet metal, they leave sharp edges, you know, and if you run your fingers along it, you could end up, you know, donating blood. But anyway, look, we're going to pull this element out. There's two screws this side. Again, they're Torx 20. We're going to open them. Okay, so I've used this Makita radio on lots of projects. It's great. You know, I have it as a light. Put a bit of plastic over it so it's not shining a spot in the oven. And the oven is dark and we'll be able to see inside it now. So here we go. So there's a plate in the back of this with four screws on it. When I take those four screws out, it gives me access then to the element. Very easy to get to. Again, Torx 20. Right, here's the first screw. Now that's all four screws out. Okay, so now the back plate. That's what it looks like. And it just sits in front of the fan. So the element is really easy to get out. Just reach over to where the elements go through the back and it pulls out. On this one, the original one has a, a clip. The one I'm gonna put in has a difference to it. And I'm gonna have to modify it a little bit to get it on. But I'm gonna compare the two. Now I haven't seen these side by side. I just opened the box. So, diameter is the same at least anyway. The plate, center to center on the screws is different. Okay, so the screws are gonna be, are not gonna line up exactly. I might have to do a little bit of drilling. Um, I think the difference between buying this one, which is the original kind of Bosch one, was about 50 euro, and this one was 10. So, a lot cheaper. So I'm gonna make this bit, <laughs> one way or another. So now that I have the two elements out, I'm going to show you the setup with the resistance. There's the old one, and I'm going to touch both sides of it, and we get no reading. Okay, no reading. Now on the first element, we got no reading. Here's the second one now. We're just going to see what that is. What have we got? About 24 ohms. 24.9, 24.8, you know. So we know that we've got resistance on it, which is how it works. So that's it. Now, unfortunately, there are differences between the two. This is cheap, 10 quid, 10 euro. 
and this is broken but about 50 57 uh, euro so anyway the diff the main difference is the um there's a plate on that and the center to center is different than on this one but only a little and i think we'll squeeze that one in the major problem is that bracket in the center there is different to that bracket you can see it goes a different direction it's um it's just different so what i'm going to do is because there's no wires or anything like that in the back of this one i'm going to put a small hole i'm going to use one of these torque screws straight through a hole that i'm going to drill and i'm going to just you know give that a fixing and that's it not not very hard but uh, not something you want to be doing necessarily but for me it's cheap and cheerful and i'll have it done in a couple of minutes here we go the way this is set up is it's going to interfere with the fan when i put the screw in it the top of the screw could potentially hit the fan as it goes around so i'm just going to bend this back out the other way this is not part of the set system it's just um you know here we go now i don't want to squash the element that, or interfere with the element at all i'm only working on this little piece of of bracket there this thing and i'm just bending it out so a bit of messing around if it had been better but i'm not chipping it back I'm just going to use it and I'm going to make make it work. So I've just turned the bracket around. It was going this direction, you know, down here it was here and now it's at the top. So when it goes in then it's going to look like that. Now here we go with the red mark again. So I'm going to offer this up, hold it in position, put a red mark through here and then I'm going to put a hole in the middle of that. Let's see how that works out. Okay, so maybe on the other camera you can see the line I'm after putting in there. So I'm going to put one in the center of that. Now this is a lot of messing around. I didn't expect this. I thought this would go easy. But um, it's gonna go. Okay, so this is a 2.5 mil hole. When I go through the metal here, it's not the outside metal. There's insulation between it. I'm just going into the insulation layer. There's already some other screws and stuff inside. You gotta be careful though. <laughs> this is dodgy. I'm gonna have to do this left-handed. Okay, so I've just put a tiny hole in the back of this now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna put a screw in it. Just you know, train the screw before I go messing with elements and so on. And that should be it. So simply one hole. So here we go. Torque screw straight into the back of that. So that's it, lovely. It's going in, no problem. All right, so now we're ready to fit the element. So I didn't expect to have to make any alterations. I thought maybe this thing would have uh, went in, but it hasn't. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna put a screw through here and it's gonna go into the little hole that I drilled in there. So that's it. Handy enough. Now, unfortunately everything's in my way and we're going into the oven. Okay, so maybe you can see this. And that's it, it's in. So now I have to work on the two screws at the back. So the element needs two screws. I've already put one in just to make this thing go a little bit faster. I said I needed a magnetic screwdriver, and I do because I found it difficult to get that in. So there's my screwdriver, and it, okay, you can see it's not magnetic. The screw just fell off it. But to make it magnetic anyway, this is very easy. Most kids know this. So anyway, look, this is a neodymium magnet out of a hard drive that was scrapped. So I just pulled the magnet out of it. And if I just, you know, Go down along it about 20 times, even a few times makes a difference. Okay, so look. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Here's the screw again. Screw on the top. This time around, I turn it upside down and it doesn't fall out. It actually wants to stay there. You can see it hanging. Okay. So, at no expense, one magnetic screwdriver. So these two elements should have been a lot closer and they're not. The, uh, the overall dimensions and, you know, wattage and all that sort of stuff, perfect. But um, plates and such um, don't really line up. And it's just me making it happen because uh, I didn't want to ship it back. And the 10 euro, I thought, <laughs> I'd have that. So look, there's my 4 mil by 20 mil um, pan head screw and a little forehead, 4 mil nut. So you'd want big long arms now for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this through from the far side. You'll see that on the other camera. So I've got a little 7mm socket and I put the screw or, or the, the nut already in it and if I can reach around and get it set up. So I have the nut on, I'm just tight, tightening it now from inside and outside. Okay, so that's it, my element is now on. So the next trick is to put the, uh, the two wires on it. That's very easy. So as you can see, the element isn't moving. It's locked in position now, which is fantastic. 
Um, and that's it. The element is now hooked up. So all I have to do now is there's a plate inside um, that I took off to get the element out. I just have to put that plate back in. So I'm going to do that now. So the new element is in position. It's rock solid. And this is a cover plate for it. So I'm just going to put this on now. Four screws. Here we go. Now it would have been a lot easier for me to get somebody in to fix the cooker or even just go out and buy a new one. But um, at least this way it's cost me 10 euro and I have enough to go down for a few points, but I don't drink. <laughs> anyway, here we go, look. So when this goes in, it goes in that way and the bottom tabs on this act like a hinge. So two tabs in the slot and you just close it up. So we're just gonna put these screws home now. Okay, so there you go, another successful DIY project. It took a bit longer than I thought, it was a bit more difficult because the bracketry on the new element was different and difficult. Uh, but, you know, a hole later in the back plate of this thing and, you know, a bit of maneuvering and it's in and working great. 10 euro, so cheap enough to get fixed. You might want to get someone in yourself. <laughs> it's a lot easier, but uh, there you go. So look, if you have any comments or suggestions about future videos, let me know down below. That'd be fantastic. If you haven't already subscribed, maybe you could do that now. We'll move the channel on a bit. So thanks very much. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.